Hello and welcome back to the Bronuts. This time, hopefully we'll actually get around to doing some work on the car. So we've started work on the electronics and hopefully we'll get around to turning that engine by hand today. So as you probably remember, we spent quite a long time getting this car off from that frame it came on and onto the ground. And well, it's back up in the air. <laughs> the reason that we've lifted it back up is so that we can get a good look underneath the engine and hopefully get around to turning that crank by hand. Uh, the spark plugs and everything were out, that was the previous owner. There's no oil in the, in the engine at the moment either. The previous owner said that he periodically tried to turn the engine by hand to keep it, keep it going, uh, but we don't know that for sure. The gearbox is actually not connected and um, we're hoping that it's not going to be in gear so we can actually turn the engine and as you can see I can turn the wheels so there's a good chance that it's not in gear. Yeah it doesn't seem like it's in gear. The engine obviously is the masterpiece of the car so if that doesn't work this project will be very much dead in the water so we're doing everything that we can to try and make sure that it you know it seems to be okay before plowing money into getting it uh, up and running again. The uh, aim today is to hopefully turn it by hand, make sure that it moves relatively freely, that all of the banks of cylinders can, can move um, and that you know it's, it's not going to cause us major issues. Simultaneously, I've been looking at the electronics with Gert and looking at the core of the electronics, basically what comes off the battery and where it goes. So that's basically just been in the cabin with the idea of going all the way back and working towards all of the electronics surrounding the engine. That way, eventually, we can try and start the car. What that means is we have, at the moment, been ignoring some of the accessory circuits and just focusing on what we need to do for the engine. The main aim is to get the dashboard and so on wired up, make sure we've got the engine's uh, circuits all wired up, while at the same time getting the engine uh, serviced and so on so that we can get, get it ready to, to get it going, uh, while also just making sure that everything else is, is there and that we, we've got it. So underneath the car, this is the crank pulley here, um, and we have this, there's a black box here which is restricting access. This is just a crash box which we've managed to just take out. And what that means is that we've now got access to the bolt on here. So what we'll do is we'll get the um, big socket, put that on, and hopefully we'll be able to turn the engine pretty freely. Hi guys, um, I'm underneath as you can see, and I've got this socket attached to a big breaker bar. And what I'm trying to do, obviously, given the space restraints, is to get this hooked on. Uh, and then hopefully we can try and turn the engine by hand. I think it might actually be easier to try it with the other bar first. Uh, see if it moves at all with that. So Gert's hooked on to the uh, main crank with the 36 millimeter socket. Yep, I have. Um, we might need to lift the car up further actually because I've only managed to get a small bar on here, but we'll give it, give it a go, try and turn it and see if anything happens. Aha! Saw some movement. And as you can see. Oh, the engine turns. There's definitely some movement. Feels like it's jammed now. So although you just saw us uh, manage to turn the engine, um, <laughs> having some issues turning it a bit further, so we've just swapped to the larger bar and hopefully that will fix it. Yeah, so I was using a small bar just because we haven't got the car that high. Uh, I've now attached the big breaker. I can only turn it a little bit because there's gearbox cables here, but I'll give that a go. <clears throat> no, it seems a bit sticky. As it's a little bit more difficult to turn than we'd like, um, what we're thinking is because the engine's been sat for a while, things might have just started to stick a little bit. So what we're going to do is take some penetrating fluid and put it down in the spark plug wells uh, down here in each of those. So obviously there's uh, eight in total. And what we'll do is put it, put it in there, give the pistons a bit of lubricant and hopefully that'll help things move a bit more freely. 
Yeah, it's tiny. Right, it felt like it loosened up. So we try it here. Yeah, it turned quite a lot. Okay, try it, just turn it again. It's quite difficult. This feels like it's getting easier and easier. Yeah, it would do, because it's better there's lubricant in it. So when we got this car, our first major concern was the engine. But as you can see, it's not seized and we were able to turn it by hand. So we'll start actually trying to get it ready to turn on its own steam. Uh, and to do that, one of the main things is obviously the electronics, as we said. Yeah. So what we'll take you through in a moment is all of the electronics in the cabin before we can work our way back. And we have printed off a brand new set of the workshop manual. <laughs> we did actually get a, uh, well, some pages of the workshop manual from the previous owner, uh, but they weren't quite right, were they? <laughs> no, I think they were for the uh, 360 Spider, and some of the diagrams were just a bit wrong. We had, we had a look, and some of the wires just weren't where they were meant to be. So luckily, we uh, saw the, saw the logo at the bottom, and were able to just get the get the right one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here you go. So we're now in the cabin of the car. What we're going to do is we're going to start with battery terminals. So down here we have the negative terminal of the battery and over here we have the positive. The positive terminal actually splits into two wires. You have one that sort of comes up into a fuse box here and another one that goes towards the back of the car towards the engine. We're going to focus on the cabin at the moment. So this wire goes into a fuse box and then splits into two. We have one that wire that comes out and actually goes straight into this connector. So the multimeter, I can just check this. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's beeping. So that's connected. And the second set of wires come out and join this bunch down here, which connects to all of these sort of connectors along the tunnel. So we're going to check those now. We've just taken that fuse box off. Um, if you can see it there, there are a few fuses in it. But what we can do with the multimeter is check that these fuses still work. So if you just connect the uh, common onto one end and check the other, the positive, it beeps. That means that the fuse hasn't blown. So as you can see, these actually have the number labels on. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So what we're gonna do now is check that these colored wires are correct and then trace them back. In between videoing, we have actually been starting to get on with some of the work. And what we've done is we've taken some of the connectors look them up in the workshop manual and we've started to label them so you can see there's some labels on there uh, we've identified which ones are broken as well so there's a few that are broken and, and we'll need replacing and we've started to see so you can see there where hn's holding it there's, there's actually no connector there at the moment um, and that's that's how it was when we got the car so we're going to have to find connectors make sure we've got all the right wires and uh, obviously start plugging things in this is one of the uh, broken connectors in the car a lot of the wires have just broken off, so we're going to have to trace each of those using the manual and replace this connector. So if any of you know what this connector is and where we can buy some more of these, please let us know in the comments below. And if you turn it around, you can see we have actually identified that this is 7D, so we know which connector that is. <laughs> it's a bit of a two-man job at the moment, so I've got the workshop manual in front of me, um, and this is that connector that HJAM was looking at, 24D. And if you look here, you can see each of the wires that are in, in that connector. And if you look over here, you can see 
He's Chen, has the connector in front of him. So what we're doing is he's reading out the uh, colors that are connected. I'm just confirming that it's the right color cables that are in the diagram. Okay, so the first one is pink and yellow. Yep. Next one is uh, yellow and black. Yep. Next one is black and white. Yep. Next one is white and red. Yep. Next one is red and yellow. Yep. And the last one is just blue. Perfect. Yep, so those are all correct. Um, as you can probably see down there, there's a whole load of connectors that we need to go through and basically check. Uh, hopefully they're all as easy as that one. <laughs> started labeling some of the connectors and wires and you can see everywhere where we've got a red uh, label that means something's wrong or something is missing or something needs checking so we've done three connectors so far and we've got four red labels so it looks like we're going to have quite a lot of work ahead of us we hope you enjoyed this video watching us finally getting around to turning that engine by hand and making a start on the electricals although we've made a start we still have a ton more electrical work to do uh, it might not be the most interesting thing to watch us chasing wires, so we're planning some more stuff for the coming videos. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. If you liked the video, or even if you didn't, please do hit that like button, subscribe and share with all of your friends. And don't forget to hit that bell icon, and we'll see you in the next one.